Grandpa was really a wonderful fellow. He had just retired from the railroad, so he spent time with me. But it was really wonderful that summer was he took me on little walks and told me about nature. And that summer, I learned a lot about bugs and spiders and things like that. He brought me this great brown beetle, put it in my hand, and I didn't much like it. It was scary. It was big. I asked my grandpa, Grandpa, are they all like this? Is this what all beetles look like? My grandpa, instead of answering the question with a yes or a no, did what he often did, and he told me a story, a story I'd like to share with you today. You see, it seems that there are all kinds of beetles all over the world. Why, yes, sh different shapes and sizes and colors, they're, they're everywhere. And there are some stories about beetles that will absolutely delight and amaze you. They say in Brazil, there is one beetle that is so beautiful it looks like you're about to pick up a beautiful gem when you see it on the ground. The people in Brazil say that that beetle that they have, that they treasure, that they love so much, that beetle at one time was plain. That beetle was ordinary. There was nothing special about that beetle. Why, she was the color of the earth. When she walked along, other critters would step on her. She had to be very careful, so she made sure that she walked on the side of paths so that she would be all right and carry on. The beetle was happy navigating in the world, but she did have one problem, and that problem was Paca. Paca the rat. Paca did everything he could to find Beetle and tease her. Oh, her mother told her that if anyone teased her, she would just ignore them and they'd go away. They would get bored and that's usually what happened, except with Paca. Paca would get bored but he'd be back the next day if he could find her. Always he was pestering her, making fun of her. Beetle, you're plain. Beetle, you're ordinary. Beetle, there's nothing special about you. Why, Beetle, it's too bad you're not as handsome as I am. Take a look at this gray fur, big, big ears, and oh my goodness, look at that tail. Well, Beetle had nothing to say. Beetle felt a little odd, feeling not quite so beautiful, but her mother told her she was, so she believed she was, and finally he would go away. But this happened all the time. There was a parrot that lived up in the tree, and the parrot had been watching what had been going on. And at last, the parrot one day saw this going on and said, Paca, Beetle, I've been seeing what's going on. I think the two of you need to have a contest, perhaps a race. Well, Paca was very happy about that. Oh, I want you to know I am wonderful. I'm the best runner around. Let's have this race. What are you going to give me if I win? Oh, the parrot said, hmm. To the winner, I will have a special coat any kind of a coat you want, any color you want. And to the loser, you must absolutely say that you will never, ever bother the winner again. Ah, oh, this is a good one. I like that, said Paca. When are we going to have this race? I already know what I want. Why, I'm already handsome, but I think I'd like to have a red stripe starting at the top of my head all the way down my back and out my tail. How about it? You can start it right now because I'm going to win, you know. The <laughs> beetle doesn't stand a chance. She can hardly move. <laughs> when are we going to have this race? And the pair said, well, why don't we have it now? She pointed to a spot right down at the bottom of the tree. And then the parrot said, do you see that mango tree over there? And the beetle and Paca saw. All right, at the count of three. One, two, three, and off went Paca. <laughs> I am so happy to have this coat. It's going to be wonderful. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask for two blue spots, one on either shoulder. Yes, then everyone will know I'm coming. My red stripe. Oh, he was dreaming, looking behind him, all that dust. He couldn't see Beetle anywhere. Ah, and he made it to the base 
of that mango tree. When he got there, he was taken back. Why, there on a branch, right eye level with him was Beetle. How did you get here? Did you cheat? No, I did not cheat. Well, then how did you get here? Well, said the beetle, I flew. You flew? You never told me you could fly. Well, you never asked. And with that, she lifted up her heart shell to show beautiful, delicate wings. Well, with that, Paka crawled away to find a rotten old log to hide in. And as Paka did, Parrot called down and said, You know, Paka, let that be a lesson. You know, even the plainest creatures may have something very special about them. It would not hurt for you to find out before you tease. And then the parrot asked Beetle what kind of a coat she would like. She had no idea. She hadn't even thought about that. She looked up and she saw how beautiful that parrot was. She wondered what it would be like to have a coat like that. But then she saw all the beautiful, beautiful colors of green in the trees. So many colors of green. A little bit of sunlight came through the leaves. Beetle then asked, would it be possible for me to have a coat of all the colors of the greens in the trees and a little bit of sunlight. And that's exactly what she got. And from that day to this, that little beetle in Brazil is exquisite, so beautiful, the people feel that they have found a beautiful jewel on the floor of the forest. <laughs>